Michael Phelps has been erased from the swimming world records. The way he was erased doesn't make sense to me, but Michael seems very happy about it. The last individual world record Michael had was the 400 individual medley. This is where we find out who is the best swimmer in the planet. It is 100 meters of each stroke, butterfly backstroke, breaststroke, and freestyle. It is that decathlon of swimming. In gymnastics, it is called all-around champion. In CrossFit, it is called fittest on earth. To be the fittest in the water, you need to be a little crazy. So it made sense that the swimmer with the most Olympic gold medals in the history of sports had that specific world record. But even Michael Phelps couldn't get close to this record after he set it. At the height of his career, he held five individual world records. The 200 freestyle, 100 butterfly, 200 butterfly, 200 IM, and the 4 IM. Each one of these world records was broken by incredible swimmers. Up until 2023, one of them remained the most difficult one the 400 IM, and we were okay with that. No one was crazy enough to think they could break this world record. No one thought they could swim every style of swimming, butterfly, backstroke, breaststroke, and freestyle, faster than the best swimmer that ever was. But Michael Phelps' coach, Bob Bowman, knew something none of us did. He just needed the right swimmer to prove his point. On July 2023, they proved the record was not perfect there was still a better way to swim the 400 IM and break the record. What is even crazier is that this July, they might do it again. I'm going to make a video about every swimming event at the Olympics this year. The goal is that through these videos, we can enjoy every swimming event even more and discover new tools to swim better. There was a time in the 1960s where breaking five minutes in the 4 IM seemed impossible. This might not seem impressive today, but remember that they weren't even wearing goggles or caps. Not to mention, they didn't have the SNT swimming method on YouTube. Ted Stickles was the first one to break the five minute mark, breaking his own world record by more than eight seconds. In the late 1960s and early 70s, Gary Hall Sr. took the record from 4.43 all the way down to 4.30. It took a decade to go 30 seconds lower. It wasn't until 1982 that Ricardo Prado from Brazil broke the 420 barrier. The next 10 seconds were a lot harder. It took about 20 years to get there. Michael Phelps was the first one to go faster than 410. He would break this world record eight times, more than anyone in history. He would take it down from 411 down to 403. That was at the Olympics with the famous laser supersuits. The LA Times reported, after Michael Phelps concluded his record in Beijing, he vowed to never swim the 400-meter individual medley again. The race was too grueling, he said. Then came the even faster supersuits one year later. Without Phelps, the record seemed impossible to break. Lochte, Clary, and Laszlo tried, but fell more than three seconds short of the record. Seeing this, Michael thought he could win this event at the next Olympics in 2012. Ryan Lochte showed his impressive swimming skills, beating everyone on the field by more than 5 meters, including Phelps. Despite his impressive underwater kicks and above-the-water kicks, Phelps just managed to get fourth, behind Pereira and Hajino. He was six seconds behind his world record. 24-year-old Lochte said, I'm getting too old for this event. During the next Olympics, Hajino won with a time of 4.06, 0.05, about three seconds away from the record. The next Olympics in 2021, Chase Kalish won the event with a time of 4.09.42, more than six seconds behind the world record. Leon Marchand, with a time of 4.11, got six, about eight seconds away from the record. The record seemed to be getting farther and farther away. It was untouchable. Michael Phelps became the longest lasting world record holder in the history of swimming, holding it for 20 years and 342 days. And finally, the guy who got sixth at the Olympics declared his intentions to break it. But why would anyone believe him? Well, he moved to the USA and trained with some of the best swimmers in the world. And also, very importantly, he trained with Michael Phelps' coach, Bob Bauman. You've got to be a distance swimmer. You've got to be a sprinter. 
you've got to do all the strokes. You have to have strength. You have to cover every base, and that requires a training program, which is puritanical, said Bowman. On July 23 of 2023, Leon pointed and aimed at the untouchable world record. Even Michael Phelps was there watching. I was watching on TV, thinking, could this be possible? Could someone swim faster than 403.84 without a supersuit? Here's what doesn't make sense to me. The world record didn't have any obvious weaknesses. He started at the same speed as Phelps, even a little slower in the first 50. Then he managed to catch up on the next 50. He was ahead, but not by much. At the 150 mark, he remained ahead, just barely. At this point, I am thinking, if you're not faster than Phelps in freestyle, you better be way faster than him in breaststroke. Leon finished backstroke a little slower than Phelps. Let's pause here. If you don't know a lot about swimming, you might miss this. Breaststroke swimmers are usually just breaststroke swimmers. The stroke is so different from the other three that the skills don't carry over to the other strokes. It is the only stroke where the ankles are dorsiflex instead of plantar flex. We see butterfly champions win in freestyle events. We see backstroke swimmers swimming freestyle incredibly fast. We have seen freestylers swim butterfly and win. It is rare when we see someone that can swim three strokes incredibly well. Michael Phelps and Ryan Lochte come to mind. But I can't think of any breaststroke that win any other stroke. Leon can potentially win the 200 butterfly and the 200 breaststroke this year. That is rare. And it didn't make sense to me until I remember the third pillar of swimming, which I'll tell you about at the end of the video. By the middle of the race, Leon is behind the world record and we know he is not as fast at the end. So he has to swim breaststroke a lot faster than the world record. He goes one second faster than Phelps on the first 50 of breaststroke. Then he does something incredible. This is usually the most painful part of the race. It is the point at which the legs are begging for help. The heart and the lungs are pumping blood in, exchanging oxygen for CO2 as fast as they can. So I thought maybe another second is enough to get Leon enough advantage. But no, he goes two full seconds faster than the world record split, giving him a three second lead. The world record is right there, catching him with every freestyle stroke but the lead was too much. Leon smashes the world record by one second and 38 one hundredths. Enough for Michael Phelps to be amazed. 402.50. I don't think anyone else can get close to that. Anyone but the amazing Leon Marchand this year at the Olympics. Do you think he can break the four minute barrier? It seems impossible until you remember that we used to think five minutes was impossible. And now people like Brent Foster are swimming faster than that on their late 50s. Even the best 13 year olds can swim faster than five minutes. The reason humans have improved so much on this event is because of their breathing and balance skills in the water. Those two are the basis of every swimming stroke. The other reason we have improved is the underwater dolphin kick, which we will talk about in our next video. If you want to swim the 4IM or any event better, you need to focus on the five pillars of swimming. I explained what those are in this video. The comment section of that video is getting ridiculous, so we made little awards for the best ones, like this one. See you there, swim fast.